So there are solutions. The solutions are so absolutely clear. Whether in the area of financial regulation and safety and security for the American people, whether it's fair taxation, whether it's jobs programs, I'd love to be on the stage debating Barack Obama and Mitt Romney and asking, why do we never hear you talk about a WPA type program that worked so well under FDR? He employed some six, seven, eight million people through that program. And we have this, this rapidly deteriorating infrastructure. We could put millions upon millions of people at work, gaining skills, learning about green technology, revamping our nation's infrastructure. As long as we're spending money, which is going to be a real imposition on our children down the road, we might as well, we, we certainly are morally obligated to, to invest in something that's going to be of value to them. My high school was a WPA project. Put hundreds of people to work. It's still rated one of the top, the, the most three beautiful high schools in the country. Still serving that community generations later. We can do that throughout this country. Put people to work, repair our infrastructure. So the solutions are there. We know it. The American people know it. We see it time after time in the polls. Neither the Republicans or Democrats are doing what it takes because of the corrupting influence of money. Because our government has become a plutocracy. A government that is completely controlled by the wealthy. They buy the elections, they buy the lobbyists that have their way with Congress and with the White House. There's only one reason that we're the only industrialized nation on the face of the planet that doesn't provide essential health care for all of our citizens. It's because of the corrupting influence of money from the for-profit insurance and the pharmaceutical industries. Poverty in this country. Have you heard Barack Obama or Mitt Romney talk about poverty? I heard Mitt talk about it once, sort of. He said he doesn't care about the poor because they've got such a good safety net. That's the only thing I've heard in this campaign about poverty. Four years ago, nothing was being said about it. Edward just talked about poverty a lot. But during the debates, the word poverty never came up. Neither of the candidates talked about it. None of the mainstream media moderators ever asked about poverty. You know, in the industrialized world, there are two countries that have a child poverty rate over 20%. The worst is Romania. The second, the United States, with 23% of our children living in poverty. And what does this translate into? Poverty generally, the lack of health care. We have the second highest rate of infant mortality. I think a lot of people think that infant mortality is only a problem in the developing world. We have the second highest rate of infant mortality. Babies during their first year of birth, during their first year of life dying, either at birth or during that first year. Only Latvia is worse than the United States. And we have almost the worst rate of maternal mortality. Women dying in connection with childbirth. So we hear about the Republican war on women. What about the Republican and Democratic war on women? It's not just about contraception or abortion, it's about matters of life and death. You don't hear anything about that. And by the way, African American women are dying in connection with childbirth at four times the rate of white women. There's a huge racial component to all of this. Between 2005 and 2009, 65% loss in Latino household wealth. 55% loss in household wealth in African American families. 16% for white families. That's the kind of racial 
this for any of sins. Talk about household wealth. This is all of your savings, all the equity you build up. It's your future. And this is what we have seen during the Bush and Obama years, during the years that this political monopoly of the Republican and Democratic parties have worked so hard to keep out any other voices and to quash dissent on every level, whether in our electoral system or with respect to the Occupy movement or in any other manner. And I've got to say, the mainstream media has gone right along with them. So the good news is we have the democratic tools still. We can get out and make a difference if we will. The American people, if we organize and mobilize, we can turn all this on its head. And don't ever use money, Citizens United case, all the rest of it. Don't use any of it as an excuse. That just means we have to fight harder. We have to have the gumption and the will and the tenacity that those who fought in the women's suffrage movement and the labor movement and the civil rights movement exercised, and they prevail. We can prevail too. We can achieve social justice. We can achieve economic justice. We can achieve environmental justice. Do the work that's so absolutely essential to provide international leadership on climate change which is the most grave problem facing our planet today. And we, only we, have the window of opportunity to make the difference for our children and later generations. So we have a great responsibility, but we also have a tremendous opportunity. And I would submit that nobody can fall anymore for the dictates of the Republican and Democratic law, this, this plea that they have that we've got to support the lesser of two evils. Because if you do, you're just reaffirming essentially the status quo. And that's not to say there aren't differences between the Republican and Democratic Party. There are. But generally, in terms of this plutocracy and money having its way with Washington, there is no difference. Both of these parties, their incumbents, their candidates, they are all feeding at the same trough of special interest money. And that's why we're in the fix we're in today. And we, all working together, can change it. That's why we formed the Justice Party. That's why we're working with a lot of other people that we're very, very grateful for that are helping form justice parties throughout the country. That's why we're trying to build coalitions with other parties, other organizations, bring everybody we can into this movement and work on these fundamental issues of economic, social, and environmental justice. Restoring the rule of law and restoring what was at the core what the founders had in mind and what most of us thought our nation would always stand for. So let's us understand that keeping the republic now is our job. Maintaining the republic and passing on that republic with the freedoms, the liberties, and the rights and responsibilities of citizenship but that's all passed on to our children and later generations. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to get into a question and answer session here in just a moment, um, so please uh, start forming those questions in your mind. Uh, in the meantime, um, the fight that the Justice Party is leading in its foundation is not just a fight of words. Uh, we're not interested in special interest money, but we are interested in funding from our constituency. We're interested in funding from the community, and frankly, signs and banners cost a lot of money. Um, so we have a table set up over here where we'll be graciously accepting your donations if you care to give one. Um, it, it's gonna be going to a lot of important work that we're doing trying to found this party, expand it, work in coalition with other groups and other individuals and we really appreciate that. And uh, 
I'll hand the stage back over to Rocky and he's going to administer his own QA. Thank you very much.